Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at Benford's law and fraud detection illustrated and explained in an Excel sheet computation. This topic could be covered in data analytics or data analytics and accounting in an auditing course or, or managerial accounting where managers are looking for anomalies in the data. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including many CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them. It doesn't cost you anything. Share them. Subscribe to the channel. If it's helping you, it means it might help other people. Share the wealth. Connect with me on Instagram and on my website, farhatlectures.com. You will find additional resources if you are trying to supplement your accounting education or study for your CPA exam. I can help you add 10 to 15 points if you use my material properly, CMA exam, enrolled agent, or any other accounting course that you are taking. So the idea of this Benford's law came from an electrical engineer that works that was working at GE at that time, Frank Benford. And what he noticed that when he was using the lock tables, basically before calculators, if you wanted to perform computation, you had to use this lock table. What he noticed, he noticed that the first few pages of those lock tables were used more. Basically, they were they were more uh, used up uh, because they were more touched by people. So he noticed why that anomaly that the first few pages are used more than page eight, page nine, so on and so forth. So he went on and he studied this phenomenon, I guess. When he find out that in large randomly produced sets of natural numbers, there's an expectation of the first leading digit. What does that mean? According to this law, more numbers in a population of numbers start with one than any other digit followed by two and three and so on. So what, he's, what, what he find out is that when you have a sets of data that's, that's randomly produced, what's going to happen is you're going to have the most of the numbers. It's going to start with the, with the digit one, then two, then three. And we're going to see the distribution shortly on the next slide. And to test his hypothesis or to test his idea, he used it on 20,000 observations that include demographics from New York, New York, scientific finding, as well as numbers appearing in the Re Reader's Digest magazine to confirm what he was observing. And basically what he observed is that the first digit one appears third, expected to appear 30% uh, in the numbers, the number two, 17.61, number three. I mean, there is a mathematical uh, computation for this. We, we, we're not going to use it. I'm not a mathematician. I can profess I don't even totally understand it. I'm just going to accept it and work with it. So this is what we're going to be working with. And when do we use this Benford's law in accounting or fraud deduction or internal control? It's used on sets of numbers that are results from mathematical combination, like account receivable, accounts payable, where you take the quantity purchase or the quantity sold times the price, because you're not really looking at one numbers, you're like in the combination, like like it's it's being it's being produced as a result of two numbers. Transaction level data, disbursement, same thing, sales, expenses, accounts that appear to conform, like for example, uh, accounting numbers, there should have a trend in accounting numbers or where the mean of the sets of numbers greater than the median and it's skewed to the positive, which is most accounting numbers, the mean, um, you know, you'll have a lot, a lot of uh, transaction around the price and you'll have some transaction that are more than the average. So it's skewed to the positive. When it's not likely used, so when, when don't you use this Benford law where it's, it doesn't give you any, any appropriate results is when the data or when the numbers are assigned by someone like check numbers the check numbers they are not randomly produced they are assigned one two three four there's no meaning to them like you you, you don't want to also analyze zip code zip code has numbers but it doesn't it doesn't mean that 30 percent of them is going to start with the number one okay numbers that are influenced basically by human thought like prices i said i at a psychological threshold, somebody decided that price to be $1.99 or ATM transaction where you have a minimum of $20 or a combination of $20 or any account with a built-in min and max. Like if you're looking at the height of the individual, let's assume you are looking at centimeters. Most heights are either, you know, up to two. Most people are between 100 to 200 centimeters. Well, you have people, very few people at 300, but notice you cannot use Benford's law because there's no, not, not a lot of threes, not a lot of fours, so on and so forth. So we're not, Benford's law is, will not be used in those situations. So to illustrate the concept, let's take a look at an actual accounting data 
and run the Benford slot to illustrate our concept. To illustrate this concept, we're going to be using this sets of data with order number and sales. And here's the order numbers. And we have two, 200 order numbers. We could have 2,000, 3,000. It doesn't matter. And here are the amount for each order number. Now, the first thing I want to, 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 to extract from this data is the first digit. And each number, what's the first digit? Well, to, to do so, well, there is this le left function in Excel. So you click on function left. You click on OK. And basically what you're asking what you're asking Excel to do is to look on the on the cell to the left and determine what's the first character in that number in that number so 129.33 it's one therefore I'm gonna click OK and notice now it pulled one now all what I have to do is take this number take this and scroll all the way down to my data and now what I did is I extracted the first digit from all the transaction so that's the first step. Excellent. Now what I want to know is I want to know how many how many times the number one appeared in my sales transaction, how many times the number two appeared as a first digit in the transaction, so on and so forth. So I'm going to have a column here called first digit. And I'm going to have to, and the first digit is one, two, all the way till nine. So let me go all the way till nine because, it's, you know, it's uh, all, all the way to nine, obviously. And now I'm going to have to do the count. I have to count how many ones I have, how many twos I have, how many threes, so on and so forth. So let me go ahead and do the count. So I'm going to have a column called count. And there's a function that can count this for me. I'm going to click on count if, click on OK. And it's going to ask me the range. What are you counting? I'm going to be counting this column here, all the numbers in this column. Notice it selected them, one, two, three, four, five, all of them. OK, I'm selecting here column C and that criteria is just simply put any any uh, and the criteria is the digits here so I'm gonna name them either one two based on these digits so e5 I'm gonna click on OK now it gave me 46 ones I'm gonna scroll down and it's gonna pull everything I have 200 transaction you, you always want to sum to make sure you selected everything let's see if I have the 200 transaction let me see let's sum it Let's sum everything, sum the count. It's not pulling the sum, let me just do it this way. Sum these, and I have 200 transaction indeed. So notice I was able to collect, for example, the transaction that start with the number one is 46, uh, 46 transactions, so on and so forth. That's excellent. Now I need to know how many times did the number one appear as a percent of the total. So now I'm going to compute the percentage of how many times the number one appeared. Percentage, basically I'm going to take 46 divided by 200. I want to make sure 200 is fixed or relative to everything else I'm going to be pulling. So put the dollar sign. Oh, sorry. So 46 divided by the total and around F put the dollar sign to make sure F14 is fixed. 20.23. I'm going to Pull this and make sure I add them up and they should add up to one or 100 and they add up to one so now I computed the percentage that's excellent well now I need to find out how do they stand up versus the Benford's law so I'm looking at Benford's law Benford's laws number how do they match now I can just go to the go to the uh, PowerPoint slides and copy the numbers or there is a lock function in Excel and again you don't have to worry about this just know that you could either do it this way or go through the log function so I'm just gonna show you for the um, for the sake of illustration how to pull the log numbers log of 10 which is the Benford's number uh, to this so basically you put log of 10 and let me just let me just do it manually You open and it's one divided by one plus one. Okay, so it's 30, uh, 30 point one, approximately 30 point one or 30, um, 30 percent. That's fine. I'm gonna take this and go all the way down. 
Okay, so those are Benford's number. Those are Benford's number. Now, what I need to do, I need to compare. I need to see the difference. So what is the difference? Now, I can just obviously make these percentages or make them easier, either or. It doesn't matter, three digits. So I'm going to find the difference between them. So I'm going to take this number minus this number, and I'm going to scroll all the way down to find the difference. So now let's look at the difference in a graph because you want the difference to be as close to zero if it's gonna, if it's going to be complying with with the Benford's law. So let's go ahead and graph the percentage and Benford numbers. Just kind of to, to, to take a look at it from a graph perspective. So highlight those two columns. Go to uh, insert and let's insert a insert com combo chart. And let's select this one. Yeah, this one looks good. Uh, except that the digit one, we have less of the digit one. We're expecting 30, around 30. We have around 24. For digit two, whoops. The digit two, we had more digit two than expected. And the rest are in compliance, not in compliance. Well, as expected, uh, except also six. Six, we have more sales in the digit six than when we expect so two and six now what we can do at this point if this is if this is fraud investigation we can start from there uh, for example what i can do is i i can pull all the all the transactions that are with the digit two and six so to do so i'm gonna do an insert the pivot table so this is the digit and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna insert the pivot table for sales and digits i'm gonna go to insert pivot table and if you don't know how to do a pivot table please view my pivot table example so i'm selecting the range those b and c column create this in a new worksheet and i want the sales and the digit so here they're giving me the sales number which is you know uh it's the sales number i like to create percentages and notice as a percentages so this, uh, the sales that start with the digit two represent 13.63 way more than number one which is because it's two hundred dollars but also six represents sixteen point six two now what can i do with this i can click on this and this is all the sales that start with that digit now if i have more obviously the companies will have more data now what you can do you might have the name of the of the uh, uh sales individual maybe the salespeople. And if you have this, if, if you have the sales number, if you have the sales name, the salespersons, maybe if there's the same person appearing at $600 or the majority of the time it's appearing at $600, now you want to take a look at this. Maybe this individual is inflating his or her sales to get more commission. That could be a possibility. I'm saying it. I'm not saying it is, but this is how you would start. Or the same thing, if you went to the, if you went to the 200 sales and you find out that it's disproportionately represented by one individual, then you might say, why this individual uh, is selling mostly at 200? Are they inflating their sales? That could be the case. We don't know, but at least you have a starting point that you have, according to Benford's law, you have too many sales with a digit two and six. That's all we can say for now, Not nothing more than that based on this data. Now we could also do a chi-square test to see what's the significance of the digit one, so on and so forth, but we're not gonna go into this any further. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me. And if you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, or you like ex more about Excel, please visit my website, farhatlectures.com. Study hard, stay safe, especially during those coronavirus days. Good luck.